having this feeling of feeling fat is really hard. It's really, really hard. And I'm not going to stand here and pretend like I have all of the answers to make this feeling go away. But I would like to share my experience on the matter. And because I used to feel fat when I was 30 pounds heavier, I used to feel it. I used to feel it when I was 30 pounds lighter. And I've seen it in women of all different shapes and sizes. And I've seen it, I've seen women of all different shapes and sizes not feel fat. So I think, at least for me, it was to recognise that maybe this feeling of feeling fat, as much as it feels like it's to do with my body, maybe it's about something else. When I talk to people about this, and I ask them, if you could wake up tomorrow and feel really confident and really great in yourself, in the body that you have now, so your body doesn't change, but you feel amazing and sure of yourself and confident and great and happy, etc., would you do it? Would you, would you take that? Most people answer, yes, I would do that, but there's no way that I could have all of those feelings in the body that I have now. So I wanna to talk to you today about, is that true? Is that true or is that just a really, really strongly held belief that that is impossible? And what this feeling fat, if it isn't really anything to do with our body, if it can come in all different shapes and sizes, then what, what does this feeling actually mean? And what have I done about it? Look, I still have days where I feel fat, or moments actually, I wouldn't say whole days, where I feel fat. So coming from a place where I used to feel it every single day. I'd like to share with you what has changed there and how I almost give myself permission to not feel fat. So looking back now, what I understand for myself is that fat isn't a feeling. It's not a feeling, it's not an emotion. And it really helped me to get very specific on what it was that I was actually feeling. And looking back, that would have been, for me, insecure. I feel insecure, I feel worthless, um, I feel a bit helpless, and I feel rejected, and I don't feel good enough. And to me, I placed all of this on what my body looked like. I feel insecure because of my body. I feel worthless because of my body. I feel helpless because I can't lose weight. And I feel rejected because of my body. My body isn't good enough, it's not thin enough, it's not small enough. And I think that this is really interesting because if you'd asked me back then, rationally, if you called on my rational mind and said, is it rationally possible in the body that you have to feel confident. And I would have said, oh my God, that sounds completely, you know, out of the realms of possibility. And if you said, no, think about it, is it actually possible? I probably would have given you a really reluctant, okay, yes, I guess it is feasibly possible. I don't know how I would do that, but I suppose that it would be feasibly possible. Is it possible for you to feel full of worth in the body that you are now? Well, I don't know how I'd do that, but yes, I suppose that it is possible. So what I find interesting is how closely I married these feelings with my body image when they actually weren't related. The beliefs that I had of if I'm in this body or if I'm not at this weight, I should feel insecure or I should feel worthless was really, really strong. And I don't wanna downplay how strong and convincing that belief is because I know. I don't know if I did this because it was easier at such and such weight. I can feel happy, I can wear these clothes, I can be more outgoing, I can be more confident and simpler in some ways to pin my complex emotional world down onto one very simple thing which was the number on the scale. And I think that's really interesting because it wasn't true but it, it was true because I was saying that it was true and so if I did get to that weight or I was losing weight, all of a sudden I was more confident and I was happy and I was more outgoing. But not because my body changed, but because of the associations and meanings that I put on my body brought that into being. Does that make sense? I think if I was really honest about it, what I was looking for when I was looking to lose weight or be a certain size was permission almost to be happy and be confident. I'm just speaking from my personal experience. It wasn't actually about the weight itself. I just wanted to have those feelings and, and the belief that I absolutely could not have them in the body that I had was incredibly strong and convincing. So one thing that really helped 
me was coming to understand what it was that I actually wanted. And after a lot of resistance, realizing that the things that I wanted to feel and do and be actually didn't have anything to do with my body. There are exceptions to this, of course, I'm just talking about my personal experience. Exceptions might be health related things or mobility related things. I'm just talking about me personally. And then for me, it was about asking the question, without my body changing, how could I feel confident or not feel insecure? Or how could I feel full of worth and not worthless? And how could I feel like I can help myself and not feel helpless? And if I feel rejected, what's that actually about? Besides the associations and meanings that I put onto my body about what it meant that I could feel and do and be, the other thing that I would do is I would use my body almost like a, a scapegoat for negative feelings or to kind of distract me from other stresses in life. I did this a lot. For instance, if I was feeling sad, I, I experienced that as feeling fat, I feel sad. Oh, you know, it must be because I'm too fat is how that would go. Or I'm feeling really overwhelmed with all my schoolwork. I wouldn't feel this way if I was thinner. Then life would be great. And so I've, I've actually read a lot about how if we feel fat, a good question to ask is, what emotions are we actually experiencing? Because fat's not a feeling, so what are the feelings that we're experiencing? And for me, it was about asking, is that because I've placed associations on my body about what I can feel or should feel in my body? Or is it about, I'm feeling this emotion and I'm using my body as a scapegoat. I wouldn't be feeling this if I was thinner. And again, I don't know if I did this because it was easier or it simplified things for me. It certainly seemed to make life seem a lot more simple, although incredibly stressful. It was like, have you heard that Lily Allen song of everything's cool so long as I'm getting thinner? That's how I felt. Everything is okay or would be okay if I was getting thinner. I didn't have to experience negative emotions because life was great or I had permission from myself to feel confident and happy. And I think this really played into my obsession with the number on the scale because it had all of these meanings attached to it. You know, a large part of my emotional world and internal world and my experience and reality suddenly became about this one number. But it kind of worked in the other way as well. Because I had in my head, if I'm getting thinner or if I am such and such weight, then I won't be unhappy, I won't be insecure, I won't be stressed about daily life stresses because I'll be in such a good mood. It worked the other way as well. If I was feeling sad or insecure or stressed, it meant that I must not be thin enough. Does that make sense? So I got myself really, really wrapped up into this and believed all of it completely. It's a very real experience. If I was saying like, I have to be this weight in order to be confident, and then I got to that weight and I would be confident, it kind of confirmed to me, look, so you are only confident at this weight, but what's really happening is I would get to that weight and then I'd say, Rach, now you have permission to be confident. Off you go, out you go. And I could have done that at any size, you know? I would often have, because I yo-yoed up and down in weight, I would often have this notion of if I gained weight, then I feel fat because, you know, I've gained weight, so I, I should feel fat is how it was working in my mind. But again, this is just arbitrary associations that I ascribe to it. Do you know? If I go up in weight by 10 pounds, then at that weight, then I should feel insecure. And so if I went up by 10 pounds, lo and behold, that belief would set in and it became my reality. And these beliefs, for me and others that I've seen, we're not solely responsible for creating these really strongly held beliefs. Um, society definitely plays a large role in that. With the thin ideal, even though it's, it's improving somewhat, it's still there. You know, I think a lot of us still feel it. Um, but I've also seen, and I was fortunate enough that there wasn't much of a discussion on weight when I was growing up, but I have spoken with people where it was a huge discussion of weight and, and carers or people around them had kind of instilled ideas about what weight means about a person. I worked with someone once that whose mother said that people in larger bodies are weak. It's just an awful thing to say. And she really internalized that message and she, struggled every day with not feeling strong enough. But all of these associations, it helped me to ask, what's actually fact here? 
if I'm in a larger body, is it a fact that I'm weak? It, it really can feel like it when that's the messaging that we've grown up with or we've internalized, it really can feel like it, but it's not actually a fact. It's just a really, really strongly held belief. And having all of this go on was really, for lack of a better term, it was really dangerous for me. Um, partly because I felt miserable a lot of the time, but also it meant that I wasn't working on the things that I really should have been or wanted to have been working on if I'd kind of had the opportunity to think differently. For instance, my confidence issues and self-esteem issues because I tied the association of I feel this way because of my body. It meant that I wasn't working on me, I wasn't working on developing my self-esteem, I was just working on trying to control my body or think about my body. If I felt sad and I experienced that as feeling fat, what I'd then be thinking about was my body or I'd be trying to control my body rather than working through those, those feelings and validating them and exploring them and learning how to cope with them. I know it begs the question of how did I undo beliefs and change beliefs in order to kind of break down these associations that I had. And it kind of goes beyond the scope of this video, but one thing that did really help me, and again, this isn't advice to you personally, I'm just sharing my personal experience for what it's worth for your own reflection and exploration, is I would notice when I was doing this to myself and instead of thinking, okay, I've gained five pounds, I feel insecure. Let's take that as an example. I've gained five pounds, I feel insecure, I feel fat, and I feel not good enough, and I want to shy away. That was a very typical kind of way that it played out. I would reframe that to, I notice that I am choosing to think that because I've gained five pounds, I should make myself feel insecure. I recognize this as a limiting belief or an unhelpful thought and I'm gonna dismiss it. And this took a lot of time, um, especially because I was so much wrapped up into my body image, so many limiting beliefs as it were, and unhelpful thoughts. This did take a, a lot of time. It was helped by my kind of determination to develop myself as a person and my self-esteem and my emotional world and coping with my emotions and all this stuff. That also really helped with this feeling of feeling fat as a byproduct because I was no longer placing all of those things onto my body image. But then the thoughts that I was actually thinking, I started to talk to myself more in this way. And that helped me give myself a little bit more of a sense of control around it and self-efficacy and understanding that I didn't have to think and feel this way I didn't have to. And over time it started feeling less like it was being done to me and rather I was creating this for myself and I could choose to create something different for myself. None of this is easy and the topic of body image as a whole is vast and it's complex and it's nuanced and it's highly individual. So please just take my experiences as what it is. It does beg the question and um, because I've worked with individuals in larger bodies who are absolutely adamant that because they're in a larger body, they should feel fat. They should have this feeling of feeling fat. But again, I return to you that fat isn't a feeling. I really believe, my philosophy is just my personal opinion, that we can want to lose weight for health and mobility reasons and not simultaneously have this feeling of feeling fat with all of the negative connotations that's associated with it. I think that we can be wanting weight loss for health and mobility reasons and still have every right to feel confident and happy and outgoing or whatever the case may be at the same time. To me, they don't seem like the same thing. And I know it's much easier said than done. I don't wanna get into that in this video. I really understand that it's much easier said than done, but I just wanted to highlight that to me, I think that they are two separate things almost because as much as they seem like they are really fundamentally related, I don't think that they are. The road to untangling all of these meanings and associations and, and coping mechanisms, for me, it took time. It did take time. And I think that's okay for it to take time. I think there's a lot going on there and a lot to unpack. I had the help of a therapist in order to do that. I also journaled a lot to understand what I was thinking and why I was thinking it and if it was actually true or if I was just making it true because it's what I was choosing to believe. If you're really struggling with this, I'll invite you to consider professional therapy as well with someone that understands. But for today, that's all from me today. Any questions, leave them below or any comments, I'd love to hear them. Until next time guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.